These all sound so good. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Well, samples give you an extra leg up, to be honest. But there was one that I was like, mm. I wanted to try to, I, I couldn't decide on the last one. I wanted to pull something from the recent. Hang on, we're on uh, we're live. My, I'm, I'm messing things up here. Will I? Sorry, guys. We'll be with you in just a second.
It's the Style Splurge Idea Explosion Challenge live session. Uh, and if you were here early, you uh, probably got a little uh, sneak preview of what we do uh, beforehand um, as I accidentally opened up uh, the, a different screen in uh, my stream deck. So there you go, a little bit of behind the scenes. So how's everyone doing? I'm like this. I'm exploding all over the place. Uh, I hope you are uh, too. Having a great time uh, splurging as ever. Are we on? It's not showing on, on my YouTube. Yeah, maybe. M maybe it's just uh, delayed. Okay. So, um, is it still counting down, Arash? No, it just has the idea. It just has the the screen with Luke's face on it and the hand. Are you on the right one? I think so. The style splurge. Oh, that's strange. Let me just check. Because it was working before because people were saying that we were on. Um... Very strange. How about you, Luke? Can you give some input here, by any chance? Yeah, I'm not seeing it on YouTube either. It says scheduled for. I'm on the style splurge. Um, Other people are saying it. I don't, uh, the, the, yeah. So can everyone? Every all good, right? So, so yeah. Uh, uh, other people seem to be saying it. So we're all good. Okay. Um, cool. Um. Okay. Every yes, Michael can see us. Um, and yeah, I don't know what happened with the sound there. I think what it is, is for some reason, some of my screens are basically in Ecamm Live, you uh, can set up different scenes and you can mute things and things like that. And I think there's a bit, there's a, a bit of an issue going on there. Um, so, fantastic. So here is what we are doing today. Today, you are going to find out Why becoming unique is a simpler route to success than trying to be the best. And before anybody starts uh, jumping up and down at me saying that I don't want you to improve or anything like that, that's not what we're talking about. I definitely want you to be the best. I'm just showing you why it's actually um, more effective and uh, quicker and simpler to be developing your unique music. And as we discovered last time, that is actually a definition of the best as well. Um, but um, as you will find out, most music training is focused on you becoming the best, whereas I start with you becoming unique. And yes, in the course of that, you become the best. Okay. How you will create your own style when you use the basis of an ongoing splurge practice. So one of the mistakes that people make when they think about genre style uh, and what they're going to do is they believe they can think their way into it nothing could be further from the truth that is not and even the truth not just the truth uh, my wife's been watching this uh, reality tv show called the only way is Essex, uh, which is why um, i just use the word truth rather than true anyway uh, they have a very specific accent um, so <laughs> How you will create your own uh, style when you use the basis of an ongoing splurge practice. Essentially, if you want to make unique music, if you want to create your own style, there is only one way to do it. That is to actually create your way into it. You cannot think your way into it. It's just not possible. And then uh, without, of course, the, uh, getting overwhelmed by genre options or stuck in the same old, uh, same old. So uh, that's what we're uh, going to do today um, and of course one person is going to stop Luke from making these ridiculous faces when they <laughs> win this uh, mode. <laughs> plus Arash is going to play you some of his worst splurges how about that um, as, you, as you may have seen before, however, um, 
it is a struggle to find some really bad ones when you're looking for them. Uh, which, as we've uh, as we've discovered in this uh, idea explosion challenge class, um, is an interesting new insight that I've never really had in such a clear way uh, before. Um, so let's just hope that they're worse than Luke's, uh, because everyone had a very positive reaction to Luke's uh, last splurge. Obviously. Um, so. And I've said this before, but I'm going to say it again, just to make sure. Um, about the competition, please don't send me your splurges yet. When it is time at the end of the challenge, I will tell you how and where to send them. I'm going to send them all at once. Yep. All instructions for the new splurge are also on the coaching site. I'm going to take you through a, uh, a little mind map like I did uh, last time, and that is available for you to download as well. The link is in the description. And don't forget... I'm splurging, kind of more like splurge formancing. It's kind of uh, cross between splurging and performing uh, every day, almost every day. I don't think I did it on Saturday. Um, so uh, every day on my Mike Mundaily uh, channel. Uh, and the link for that is in the description. I'm going to be doing one after this, uh, in fact, um, at my 9 a.m., whatever time that is for you. But anyway, you'll, you'll see I've, I've actually um, put, put it in the, the, uh, as a scheduled uh, thing. So if you want to see me doing that, um, then uh, click that link, uh, set a reminder, and you'll see. Um, and don't forget, we're adding a bonus session after the challenge is over, which is about helping you finish your ideas. Because obviously, as I keep saying, splurging is the first step of the creative process, where you just get ideas out. You put the clay on the wheel. Uh, you, 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 know, you don't worry about whether it's any good. You don't think about whether it's uh, any good. You don't even listen to it. So you don't know if it's uh, any good uh, at all. Uh, so we're going to do a separate class about that after uh, the challenge is over. So make sure you hit like and click the remind bell to find out when that happens. Because if you do that, then uh, YouTube will uh, tell you when it's um, happening. Um, and also... Um, Turn your notifications off. And I know those two things are completely uh, in opposition. As we know, uh, one of the um, determining factors of a creative mind is the ability to hold two opposing ideas in your head at the same uh, time and uh, view them both as equally true. So click the remind bell and turn your notifications off. There you go. Just be, may, I may, I'm, I'm helping you be creative. <laughs> so what we're doing today is... As usual, having a little review of what you're doing so far so that we can help you overcome the problems you faced with uh, some uh, ideas. I mean, literally taken thousands and thousands of people through this idea explosion challenge. Um, I've, I've, te I've helped, uh, I don't know, even more thousands of people splurge. Um, uh, so it's like, it's funny when people see things for the first time and they ask a question as if it's never been asked before. <laughs> <laughs> and you're just like, you know, yeah, okay. This is uh, question 3C. <laughs> okay. Um, and uh, so, so, you know, almost every question, and that doesn't mean don't ask questions. It really doesn't mean don't ask questions. Please do ask uh, questions. I'm not, I'm not sort of rolling my eye, uh, eyes every time those questions are being uh, asked. Uh, what I'm pointing to is, is the fact that, yes, this does work. And yes, any, uh, for, I mean, I don't know. I don't want to say any because I don't know. Because you know, I haven't heard every single question, um, and the only way of knowing this would be by being able to see the future. But it's been quite a while since I've heard somebody ask a question that's not been asked before. Okay, so just uh, understand that all of these questions do have an answer, uh, and all of these all of these problems do have a solution that has been solved. So all you need to do is uncover uh, that that question, you know, or that problem by asking us. Okay. Um, and I'm going to step-by-step step, uh, demo uh, the new splurge, the style uh, splurge. I will confess I've done a tiny little bit of preparation before um, on uh, this one just because I didn't want to kind of uh, bore you with uh, twiddling uh, knobs in order to uh, you know, get to the point. Because this one's a different one. This isn't a preset splurge. This is a, a style splurge. So, uh, and I'm going to go through the rules and splurge as I go. And then, of course, there's going to be Q&A throughout. So, before we do that, though, the next session is where I give you the final 
splurge of the splurge challenge. And you get three days for this uh, final uh, splurge. It's called the final countdown splurge where we turn the heat up. And uh, what we're going to do in the session on the 12th of January is reveal the so secret the world tells you it's wrong method, which uh, literally every successful artist I know uses. I was talking, who was it I was talking to last week? And I was like, I can't think of too many things where literally every single successful person tells everyone, do this, and this is how I do it. And then everybody ignores it. <laughs> so I just, uh, it's like, how, how is that possible? Like everyone goes, no, 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 that's not true. That's not true. Whereas every artist goes, yes, but I did this. And they go, yeah, no, 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 but I can't do that. That's not true, right? This is, this is what we're talking about here, right? The so secret, the world tells you it's wrong method, which literally every successful artist I know uses to discover where the biggest breakthroughs are in your music making. And how ignoring most people, except the successful artists, <laughs> right, and often your own thoughts, to double down on your splurge practice will deliver results your friends will shake their heads in wonder at. In fact, you'll probably shake your head in wonder at it too. I've certainly found myself shaking my head in wonder at the amount of progress I've been able to make. Not because I'm some kind of musical genius, far from it, but because for many years I didn't make that kind of progress. But just because I'm, I'm using a, a particular kind of frame around things. Luke, let me ask you, like, when you really started to kind of splurge and use the kind of thing that people are going to be doing in the final countdown at splurge, what was the, you know, what was the difference that made? I mean, were you, you know, were you surprised at the kind of progress that you started to make? Yeah, I mean, just because <laughs> you can run through so many ideas so much quicker as opposed to like trying to fix a bad idea. Yeah. Um, you just end up kind of like shocked with the good ideas that you have. Um, and you may have to go through a lot of them to get there, but the overall quality just improves because you're not polishing as many bad ideas, you know? Mm. Yeah, it, no, exactly. So um, the, you know, when, for instance, when I splurged last time and I did, I did that uh, preset splurge and it wasn't, bad I'm not, I'm not saying it was the greatest work of genius uh, ever but it wasn't bad and you know there was some you know i can't remember who it was uh, that said you know oh god i wish i could go this fast you can <laughs> not now necessarily but when you practice going fast you learn how to go fast and then that in itself increases how quickly you get better yeah it's like a it's like a flywheel it, it just doesn't stop yeah. I mean, obviously, there is a point at which you can't go any faster because your, your, your muscles can only go so fast. But you would be amazed how fast you could go. I mean, I was listening to um, Glenn Gould play this uh, piano sonata, uh, Mozart piano sonata that I've been learning. And I was, <laughs> I was like, I literally don't know how far, how he ma makes his fingers go that fast. Like, like, even go that fast, let alone play the right notes. But so, so you know, you can probably go a heck of a lot faster than you think you can. Anyway. First, let's review how you've been, um, how you've been uh, getting on. Um, and by the way, for the people who have got here on a uh, Sunday, big ups. You're the hardcore. You're the people who are going to get most out of this process. Like, this, is, this is commitment, and I salute you. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I mean, I know some people just can't, can't make it because they've got family stuff and, uh, and whatever. But, you know, to, to give up uh, some of your weekend to, to, to come and watch us make fools of ourselves is uh you know is absolutely <laughs> like that uh with a bit of this as well so anyway let's review how many splurges have you done type in the chat and by the way number of splurges it's like that's this isn't i mean it is a competition obviously <laughs> I was about to say this isn't a competition. It is a competition, actually, Michael, isn't it, this time? Yeah, but no, what I mean is the number of splurges isn't the competition. <laughs> but let's just find out. I'm interested to know. How many splurges have you done? 
B Mono says 24, Muff Jefferson 91, Yanku 41, Frankie 3, Todd Garrison 22, David Graneman 112. Whoa. Hi. Hi. Yeah, right. Leroy, uh, Leroy Marsh 6, Claire Jackson 21, Rob at least two every day, Neurofly 23, uh, Justin 15, Safe Nate 220. Good God. Nice job. <laughs> Bart. To be honest, no, uh, Nafe is a, a long time. Uh, he's a, oh. a Leapo and uh, uh, he was a masterminder. So he's been doing this a while, right? So to, okay. to, to when, if you're somebody who's done very few and you're seeing some insane numbers, like remember, people are in different situations. Some people have been making music for a very long time. Um, some, you know, and are too, totally familiar with their equipment. Other people have been in the leap. Uh, other people have been my coaching clients and uh, masterminders, and so they've been doing this uh, a long time. Um, so, so don't you know? Don't get downcast if you're if if you've done very few. Some people have loads of time. Some people have virtually zero time. So so just just remember that. But um, if you have been find, struggling to spend uh, at like thirty minutes per splurge, if you're spending longer than that, yeah. Uh, what I would recommend is really doubling down on that rule. I'm actually going to re reduce the amount of time that the maximum time is this time. And just finish your splurge when the time is done. Okay? Because there's so many more benefits to doing more splurging, like more splurges, than there are doing less. Yeah? If you're struggling to stop after half an hour, that's probably an indication. Well, what is that? What do you think that is an indication of? Uh, you're if you can't stop if you yeah, have if, you if you're struggling to stop after like half an hour i uh, i almost wanted to say like perfectionism finding designing finding the right thing the right sound the right this the right that yeah and and like over over in an hour absolutely that's that, that that's exactly it it's 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 an indication that you are probably probably attached to your ideas you're, you're being too careful you're, you're worrying too much about them so just just uh, recognize that and simply just harden that rule right? i'm just going to stop i'm going to you know even set um in fact no i'll, I'll leave that for now I'll, I'll, I'll leave that for now just just harden that rule i'm going to stop after a certain amount of time because that's going to set you up um really well for the final splurge which is coming uh, uh, next time okay the next question what has surprised you most so far type in the chat What has surprised you most so far? Hey, what surprised me most so far was the whole insight about um, not being able to find a bad splurge <laughs> that, 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 that is bad enough. That's been the biggest uh, surprise for me. And it's probably going to unlock a whole new raft of various different exercises um <laughs> so andrew writes i'm enjoying so many different tempos right Muff. tapping in the styles i've not musically explored in years all caps bart not thinking is freedom Murofly, how random good ideas are reverberate how unattached to my ideas i can get Todd, different musical styles explored. John, that I like something I made with the factory preset. David, the sounds I find from the just stop that for a second, so, sorry. Yeah. So yeah. that I like something made with a factory preset. Now, that's great. I'm glad that you've, uh, you've had that insight. But let's just think about what's behind the, the assumption that you wouldn't. Is it possible to make good music on a piano is it possible to make good music on a guitar is it possible to make good music on a violin now some people might argue and say it's not possible to make good music from a guitar because i don't like guitars uh, some people might say the same with a piano or a violin but the fact is yes of course it is and uh, yes a preset is a little bit different it might be a little bit more constricting than a guitar a piano or a, or a violin but 
why? Why wouldn't you be able to make something that you like from a factory preset? What is the assumption behind not being able to? Is that music that you don't make from the ground up yourself has to be bad, that there's something wrong with it? This is one of those memes that's propagated out there on the internet uh, by various uh, different people. Um, but Luke, why don't you why don't you say why that is uh, such a destructive and also fundamentally ridiculous idea when you think about it? Um, probably just because um, I mean I guess like everything is kind of like that like every sound right it's um, did you make did you make the uh, piece of equipment that you that, that you made the the thing you know, let's say you don't make presets so i don't make so it's, let's just say i'm just kind of using these modes so there aren't any presets there's no such thing right i didn't make the modes that means i'm not going to like it but like, where do you draw the line yeah, it's like you could keep going and say, like, did you make the metal of the computer? Um, did you make the computer itself? Did you make did you make Ableton? Like, why didn't you program your own DAW? Yeah, you're not a music. Producer. I mean, you know, come on. What, what's wrong with you? You're cheating. Like, where Perfect. do you draw the line? Right. I tell you where I draw the line is in my own mind. That that that's like so so I I definitely wouldn't copy somebody else's tune and pass it off as my own it's not in a million years that's just uh, not, not something that i would do i draw the line uh, there but like tools are tools what you do with them is where the skill is and you know a, a an arpeggiator is cheating like music itself is cheating if 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 what you're saying yeah not not what you're saying uh, john by the way but what people say <laughs> Um, about presets is cheating. It's just such an arbitrary kind of uh, point at which you're, you're you're drawing that line. You know, there's that thing about skinning the goat. Uh, you know, unless you become a goat farmer, you can't play you can't play the drums. Yeah, because <laughs> like, but even then, you know, you can go further back. You probably have to become a goat or something ridiculous like that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, just just question that. I mean, I'm not saying that means you have to use presets, of course. Or that using presets is good or bad. It's neither. It's just what it is. But it doesn't mean that it's worse. If you have to build everything from the ground up, then then you have to. I mean, yeah. Where do you draw the line? Exactly. Uh, Glowpair says using the twelve tone system is cheating. <laughs> yeah. So um, okay, let's move on to the next uh, question. Um, hang on. Screens. What's been your biggest uh, frustration? Oh, okay. What's been your biggest frustration? It's funny. What's been my uh, often? What's been my uh, frustration in the last few days of splurging is um, that as a re actually as a result of what you're about to uh, learn today. I've kind of got to a point in my music where I've never been um, as excited, literally never been as excited, but just from doing the things that, that I'm going to show you today. And um, what's been frustrating uh, for me is like every problem brings another problem. Yeah, it's like you, problems are inevitable. So, and problems are good because they help us uh, move forward. But what's been really frustrating uh, for me is that the amount of time I've been able to enjoy how what's happening is very short because I've realized that I like it when things are hard. I actually don't like it when things are, are easy. <laughs> I, find, I find it a little bit like, oh, this is a bit too easy. So what I did um, in order to overcome my uh, frustration is I got my Remarkable and I just wrote down all of the different ways that I could make what I'm doing harder. Um, and I'm basically going to choose one of them. So I'm actually like intentionally creating problems for myself <laughs> in order, because I know that if it's too easy, I'm going to get bored. Um, and when I say too easy, obviously I'm not, you know, making the world's greatest music immediately. So there are lots of things that I can improve, but it's almost like 
it's, it's almost like I, I need some kind of resistance in order to keep the motivation up. So it's, it's, that's super interesting as well for me is, is how that works. We, 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 we tend to believe we want a hassle or problem-free existence. But I can tell you what the ultimate hassle or problem-free existence is, and that's being in the ground dead. So we don't actually want that. What we want are interesting problems to solve. Anyway, let's read out some of these um, frustrations, see if we can help people. Yes, Isolation Disco says work. Work. I can, I'm guessing work might be getting in the way. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Max also says uh, work here. Um, and in what way, I mean, obviously that's, that's a frustration, but, but probably that's about uh, time. Um, you don't need a lot of time in order to, to splurge. I mean, that's, that's uh, the main thing. Really, the, the whole point of what we do here um, at Make Music Your Life, I mean, it's called Make Music Your Life. It's not just Make Music Your Life. It's, there's Make Music and there's Your Life. Because one of the insights I had is like, but what are you, why, Mike, why do you talk about all of these, uh, these uh, things which aren't, aren't relevant to music? Okay. What are the things that reliably stop you making music more than anything else stuff that happens in your life like maybe your motivation right? maybe a life situation right? so in what way is your life not relevant to you making music how wh what i don't even know what people mean when they say that it's like no you must only talk about compression ratios mike and otherwise you're you're not actually giving us valuable information Right, you can't get to the compression ratios if you've got a job which is taking all your time and all your energy. Yeah, so let's let's also talk about that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean it's not it's not that I'm just going to you know only talk about that, but you know if you're not actually getting in in the studio in front of the door or in front of your uh, equipment, then we do need to talk about that in order for you to talk about the next thing. There is a th th there is an order uh, of things. So yeah, I mean I think really if it's work, it's simply about lowering the bar on what you think you have the amount of time you think you need you don't even need half an hour yeah i mean how often luke do you uh make music for like five or ten minutes <laughs> all the time right it's almost like the more common thing exactly that's more my experience than anything else so like i'm sure you have five or ten minutes uh, here and there um any others? Oh, yeah. Andrew says, letting go of quality mindset. Okay. So, letting go of a quality mindset. So, so um, Arash, I know um, you've had some experience here. So, what would your uh, advice be? Was it Andrew? Yes. Yeah. I would say, make more. Make a lot more. And then when you think you've made a lot, make even more. Because then you'll see that, I, one, the idea of quality, first of all, you're, you're going to get better because you're just making a lot. So through virtue of practice, it's going to get better. But then also the idea that these, what I'm making has to be perfect you may find that it goes away because what I found is when I make something and I don't like it, I'm like, mm, cool, uh, I got, I'll, I'll make another one tomorrow or another one right after this. So that's, I found that the idea of quantity, like Mike says, helps with quality. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Um, this one I can answer. If you go to um, Discord, um, Luke posts a um, link to this, whatever the, the uh, event is, the YouTube event is in uh, Discord. Uh, where do you post it in Discord, Luke? Um, in the, the live calls schedule. There was, yeah, there was an issue with it really? um, earlier. Yeah, oh. there, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what happened, but this is, yeah, this is like a different stream than, but yeah, typically it's in the... Uh, the live sessions and announcements. 
Oh, weird. Maybe, maybe I started the wrong thing. That's entirely possible. Um, it started though. Okay. Yeah, I I stayed on the uh, on the other link and just was like, hey. Oh right, yeah, no, that probably I, that that must be a, a Mike Monday issue. Uh, that's what happens uh, sometimes. Sorry. Could be that. a Luke issue. <laughs> I don't. But, no, uh, but, I think yeah, it's I don't... probably a me issue. So it's likely to be a me issue. Um, so. Um, <laughs> Oh, so Luke, can, actually, one thing, you, could you uh, go and copy the description from the original one and put, in, and put it into this one? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, yes. Just so that people have the links that I'm saying that they have, which they don't have, because this will be a new thing. Um, I've really got to, uh, right, note to self, make a um, checklist of things to do. Probably what I did was I didn't, I didn't stream to the right thing. Apologies about that, folks. Totally and utterly uh, my, my, uh, my mistake. So, um, Colin, Would you like me to not liking what I'm on? making, letting go. So, Colin, um, which part of you cannot trust yourself in any given moment do you not believe? Maybe you don't believe it. Like, let's just wait for the listening session, right? But if you don't like what you make in any given moment, th that's okay. You, you don't have to because you might be wrong. Remember. Um, now I understand that you may well kind of conceptually understand that, but not. Um, but still find it hard. Uh, but as you as this is demonstrated to you, over and over again, that you don't that you're wrong often you'll find it easier to let go so this is partly about practice and just uh, doing it okay um one of the problems here can be that if you um hold on too tightly about your opinion in any given moment if you really really believe yourself then confirmation bias can start happening so like you can start liking it because you think you like because you remember liking it rather than because you do like it right? which calls into question what do you, what does it actually mean to like something right but but um essentially what you know i don't know if you've had that experience where you've been working on something for a, for a long time and you've really liked it and then all of a sudden you absolutely hate it that's often because of confirmation bias where the reason that you've liked it is because you liked it before. Yeah, because what confirmation bias is, is a it's a heuristic or a, a kind of little mental hack. Well, not a hack, but it's a kind of process that your brain uh, uses to reduce the amount of information that, that it has to take in. OK, and it's very, very unreliable. If you want more on this, there's a book called Thinking Fast, Thinking Slow by Daniel uh, Kahneman. Uh, who was a no Nobel Prize uh, winner in economics, even though he wasn't an economist. He was a psychologist. But anyway, um, he and Amos Tversky, his uh, partner, who is uh, no longer with us, but uh, they discovered these heuristics, uh, and one of them being confirmation bias. And confirmation bias says that you will discount information that doesn't go along with a previously held belief. Now, I've probably murdered the actual uh, kind of scientific definition of it, but it's something like that. In other words, you will just put, not pay attention to thing like evidence that doesn't go a, a, along with a, a pre-existing pre belief. And this is even more the case with a belief that is very strong. So that's why con conspiracy theories happen, right? It, because of that. It's like, it doesn't matter what evidence somebody uh, presents to you because you've kind of You've put, you've put so much of your kind of identity almost in this belief, it becomes very difficult for you to notice anything else other than the things that supposedly confirm the belief. Now, in terms of music, this is very, very damaging. Because if you really, really believe that something is great, or you really, really believe that something is terrible, then confirmation bias will naturally lead you to discount any other possibilities. So you won't hear why it's good. You'll only hear why it's bad. So one of the things we must do if we aren't to waste enormous amounts of time, get incredibly frustrated, ruin things which are already good, is <clears throat> disengage from our opinion in any given moment. We need to be able to see that we do have an opinion, see those thoughts, and go, well, it might be right, 
and it might be wrong. Otherwise, we are in severe danger of falling into confirmation bias. And this is a lot of what the splurging is about. It's not everything, but it's a lot of what splurging is about. It's about having a more objective view of what is good and what is bad. And really what that means, what objectivity means, is accepting that we don't know. <laughs> right? We cannot be sure. I had a masterminder. Mastermind is my uh, small groups of uh, music producers who meet every two weeks, and I uh, coach them. Um, it's four, uh, four in each uh, in each little group. And um, in the last session, there was a guy, and he writes uh, sort of techno. It's it's minimal techno. I don't know what we call it minimal techno, but it's, it's kind of very very stark uh, uh, techno. And we were talking about his uh, music and his goals for next year and, you know, how, you know, how he's gone this year. And he's just, I just don't like any of the music that I've been making. So we talked about how he could change it um, in the future. And it was really, really, really uh, sort of down on himself uh, and his uh, music. Um, and, I, and I was like, look, like, well, that's, that's great. You've got good information that there are certain things that you haven't been doing. And I sort of coached him through what are the various different things that you don't like about it rather than just saying you don't like it. What is it that you don't like about what you've been doing? Um, and, you know, he came away with some ideas as a result of what to do next, because really that's all that's important. And just yesterday, I got a message on our little Slack uh, uh, community, the Mastermind Slack community, saying, oh, uh, by the way, those tracks that I said that I really didn't like have just been signed by a really, really great record label. <laughs> so, so, and, he, and it was like, and, and, I, and I was like, well, there you go. I was like, like you, you know, just accept that as the music producers, we are not in the best position to judge our work, which is kind of the paradox at the core of the creative uh, uh, process. Um, and he said what was really interesting for him was that as soon as, because they loved it, they absolutely loved it and they're excited to release it. And this is a really great record label for him. It's just like, you know, I don't know whether it's top notch, but it's near top notch, right? And they were, they, you know, they, they were really excited about releasing these tracks. And he said, it's really interesting because now I actually like them. Wow. Yeah, he says, <laughs> like, I, yeah, I mean, I don't know whether he said, I actually like them, but he said, it's amazing how the, my opinion of them has changed and just simply as a result of that external uh, uh, validation, right? So like, there's another example of it not, you know, your opinion being, I mean, I'm not saying that the label is right. Who knows what is right? But, but this is the point. We need to let go of what we like and don't like in any given moment. Not, not reject it, not, say that it's right N neither just see it and still move forward yeah it's just kind of just accept that it's there and not and not worry about it too much yeah um uh are there any other questions that you think would be good to address uh right now So Kai says not having good enough speakers, and I that I feel like that's important to bring up um, because your equipment doesn't really matter, I believe. And 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 you know if anybody can talk about this, Mike, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so I and this is part of the music production industrial complex where they make you think you need to have the the latest and greatest. And don't get me wrong, you, there, there is something to be said about being able to hear what you're doing well um, or in, in decent quality. But if the fallacy is, and trust me, I've gotten caught up in that, is in believing that if I buy this next synth, if I buy this next plugin, that I'm about to create the best music of all time. Like that's not, it's, it's very easy to slip into that way of thinking. And the encouragement that I would have is to like you to to have you look at what you have and know that you can come up with great ideas, no matter what speakers you have. People make great ideas in just headphones and uh, and their laptop, no controller, no uh, drum machine. You can I've worked with producers who've done just that. And so I so watch for that. Um, one, it'll save you a lot of money. And uh, two, it puts the onus on you to really splurge a lot 
and so that you know that it's the idea that counts, not necessarily what you hear, the equipment that you use. Mm. Yeah, I think I think Porter Robinson, who's I mean, not my favorite artist, but like pretty big name for I, th I think for the longest time he was using like a one hundred dollar pair of Logitech speakers um, that were just like laptop speakers. And he just, you know, if you listen to enough music in them, you can learn how they sound and then you know how that set of speakers sounds and how it sounds across systems. Um, and then you can make it work across systems. And like 90% of people are listening on like JBL, like Bluetooth speakers that are mono. <laughs> so it's, it's like, or like AirPods. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. So it's like, uh, you know, you can get by. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think you know it, it. It is fair to say that one of the best thing, one of the best investments you can make is is a decent set of speakers, sort of before a lot of other things. That, that I think that's that's fair enough, and also room treatment is, is is one of the best investments you can make. But that's that doesn't mean you can't you can't make great music on terrible speakers. I mean, my the whole of the album that I made, um, coming back to making music, was made on tiny little, you know, the tiny little uh, Genlex. Now they're good speakers, but there's a whole frequency range missing there. <laughs> like, there's no no, no, no bass uh, whatsoever. Um, I see one here. The strength splurge was frustrating. I still have trouble ignoring my uh, uh, weak points. Yeah, I mean, um, you've done two days of strength splurging. I would, I would question whether in that amount of time you're going to get to the point like immediately where you are able to to know what it means. As I said, this is an ongoing uh, practice. So, um, and it's not so much that you completely ignore your weak points, it's just you've set up a template to double down on your strengths and de-emphasize the uh, weak points. It's not so much about ignoring them, you are aware of them, yeah? Um, and any template or any th you know starting point that you use is, is simply a starting point, also in terms of you kind of upgrade it you know sort of upgrading it to something else and stuff i mean where i've got to with uh, my music is um you know and w w with the way i'm using things it took me it took me multiple different iterations to get to a point where it kind of all suddenly exploded into into life i mean i was making music before that and it you know it, and it was cool but but at some point it just kind of all clicked into place and this was an iterative process so don't um get too frustrated about that because you've only just uh, started la well um, here's another. Silver beat. I just want to let, let me just, let me just say, let's say this one. So, French, too many ideas. <laughs> I don't think you can have too many ideas. I don't, I just, I don't think that's a, that's a problem. Um, and, uh, you know, difficult to temper in my enthusiasm. Uh, I'd also call that a first world problem, shall we say? <laughs> it's like, I'm too excited. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Sorry, what was the one you were going to say? Stilavid says, sometimes I need to make a problem to get myself out of a rut. Yep. Um, oh. Sometimes I need to make a problem. Um, yeah, I mean, that's what I did this uh, this weekend. I mean, I don't think I'm in a rut exactly, but I could, I could see uh, that it could get into a rut quite easily because it's sort of coming easily. Um but what I would do is I would say intentionally create that problem. Think about what it is, what it is where you want to develop. I mean, the, the way I think about it is that if I'm in a, in a rut or I'm getting bored or it's too easy or something where I'm kind of in my comfort zone, um, I make a list of all the different ways I could make it hard or harder. Uh, what problems I could intentionally create? Where do I want to develop? I mean, we were talking after the last call, uh, weren't we, guys? I said, maybe I need to start singing. Um, I haven't quite got, I haven't quite got there yet, uh, but, mm. but um, that, you know, that, that would certainly create a problem, probably mainly for everyone else, um, because they'd have to hear my terrible singing. Um, but yeah, uh, the, 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 uh, be intentional about it. It's almost like, because create, you know, intentionally creating problems when to, to get out of a rut can be, can turn into self-sabotage if you're not careful and you, you don't want to do that. It's almost like, Decide where you want to develop. Make a list of all the things that, that you could make harder for yourself, and then choose between uh, choose between them. Okay, great. 
All right, let's uh, move on. I can't get it out of my head that I got it wrong by putting the um, the <laughs> the I, by not putting the uh, thing in the right place. So I'm a little bit distracted by that. I'm kind of beating myself up a bit, by the way. So I'm just gonna uh, I'm just gonna try and right there we go. That's better. Now uh, next, what could you what could you do uh, differently in the next two days to overcome uh, this frustration? What could you do differently in the next two days to overcome this frustration? <laughs> Hello, David. You're holding yourself back, Mike. The songs you sang on could be mega hits sung by Beyonce. You don't know. Yes, I know. Uh, I know. No. I'm human too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Part of it is uh, saying these things in public, though. Right. I mean, obviously, obviously, there's a part of me that wants to do it because I'm telling everyone about it. So, we'll see. Okay, so, Muff, splurge more. Like a lot more. Brilliant. Love it. Rob, Rob. <laughs> yeah, go on. You, you read him out. Yeah, okay. Pledge to carry on splurging. It's that simple. Pat Levine, moderate to heavy drinking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, brilliant. Um, Beck, be quiet. Uh, meditate. Be mono. Keep going and practice more piano. Miro fly, more discovery mindset. Bart Schultz, deal with it. Lie Society, make more splurges. Cryptoso X, just sit and put my fingers to work. All right. Gerald Patient, change attitude towards what frustrates me. Can I just stop that? Yeah, like, um, in terms of uh, frustration, so frustration is really the, the reaction that we have to a problem. Yeah, or a reaction that we have to a problem. And like, one of the biggest um, sort of developments in my understanding of reality in the last in, in uh, 2020 was like, like really really getting to grips with how um important problems are for our development you know i have said it in the past which is a real kind of coachy woo thing which is like you know problem problems are simply solutions in disguise yeah that, that you know that kind of thing and you know uh, like eye rolling ensues uh, f f from everyone um but, but when you actually really look at it when you break down your the things that are actually stopping you doing the things, things that are frustrating you. I mean, we had a coaching session, didn't we, Luke and Arash, where we literally couldn't find a problem that wasn't the solution itself. I mean, we spent about I don't know forty five minutes trying to figure it out, didn't we? It's yeah. Like, there's got to be there's got to be a problem that isn't a solution. I mean, what what can you think of an example? Uh, uh, Luke, so so you so that people understand what we're talking about. Um, well, I I think I don't know if we talked about this, but I did. I was thinking about like social media use, and I was like, this really isn't a problem; it's a solution. Um, so can, can you explain? <laughs> can you can you explain uh, like what you mean by that, so that people understand? Well, it's kind of like you know, if you think that social media is the problem, you can kind of start to like like use I don't know do a bunch of different things that aren't necessarily looking like, well, why are you using social media? And it's like, well, you may want to be informed. You may want to be connected. You may not feel like you're accomplishing anything. Uh, or, and so you go to on, so book there, go on social media to get a bunch of like dopamine hits and feel like that sense of accomplishment. And so if you don't have, uh, if you don't realize that, like what the reason is or the problem you're solving by using social media, um, you can just kind of like, I don't know, you don't, you're not like thinking about the right thing that will solve the actual problem, mm -hmm. right? That makes sense? Mm -hmm. and, it, and the same thing um, happens with a lot of different things. Like you look at a thing and you say, that's a problem and it may actually, if it's a solution, you may be trying to uh, solve a solution. It might just be a bad solution to what is actually a problem, right? Is that did that clarify it? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think, I think, I think if you if you actually identify what the problem is, 
So let, let's just say, so, you, you know, uh, social media, well, well, it depends which way around you're looking at it. You're, you're, you're saying that social media is the solution. It is an inappropriate solution to, to, to a certain number of problems, right? Or, or, or maybe, it's, maybe not inappropriate, maybe. Um, not the best solution not to a number of different problems. Right. 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 But the only way that you know that it's not the best solution to a number of different problems is by knowing what the problems are that you're solving. Exactly. Right. And so knowing what the actual problems are that you are supposedly anyway, so solving with social media, so you know, connection with other people, knowing what's going on, uh, promoting your, uh, you know, your music, etc, etc, etc. Like, like, how to how do I promote my music? Yeah, let's say, I don't know how to promote my music, there's a problem instantly that you've identified the problem rather than just jumping to the solution, which is social media, <clears throat> you realize that there are multiple other solutions to that problem that don't have, and I'm not saying don't use social media to promote music, by the way, I'm just using this in an example. No, that, that there are multiple other solutions to the problem that might actually be better solutions. Yeah, because social media comes with other, you know, consequences of like, it's kind of like a slot machine. It's kind of like addictive. It's like it's probably not the best way to solve some of these problems. Um, and it, you know, it's like by using that to solve the problem, you get all these unintended, uh, you know, things that come with it. <clears throat> these are the problems. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like you're often worse. You feel bad about it. Up, so you drink beer. Uh, and it's like that's probably not the best way to solve that. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you know? Yes, uh, that, um, that, yeah, that's exactly it. I think if we jump to solutions too fast without actually identifying what the problem is in the first place, we can often uh, just end up as well. First of all, we we end up assuming that the problem is not solvable, um, uh, and uh, you know because we've just tried one thing and it didn't work. Yeah? And, and the second thing is that that those solutions that we do uh, end up using create other problems which are worse than the initial. Um, so, so problems really are where it's at at the end of the day, in terms of knowing what to do next. And yeah, just constantly ask yourself, what is the problem that I'm trying to solve here? Yeah. Um, okay. Let's move on to the style splurge. Um, and before anything else, I have a, a question for you. Uh, for you. Aside from the fact that you love making uh, music, aside from the fact you love it, what are the reasons you make music at all? Post in the chat. And can you read out some of these? Um, oh, actually, I just need to uh, pop through there for a second. I'll be back in a minute. Yeah. yeah? Yes. Mm. Jean Pierre says, I like that splurges put me in the flow very quickly. Leroy, therapy, be quiet, attention, silver beat to earn my living. Frankie, give people feelings. Be quiet, money. Kai, music is love. Max, exploration. Muff, it is therapy, clears the heat. Headspace gives me an outlet and a sense of purpose. Spencer, to play live. Uh, be quiet, connection, relatedness. Colin, I just love it. Helps me relax. Jamie. I did say, I did say uh, aside from the fact you love it. What's the oh, other yeah. reason? What's the, 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 uh, a bit of the other reasons. Uh, uh, like, Jamie, may, the may, may well tell yourself there aren't other reasons, but I bet you there are. Uh. Like this one, Jamie, to further my DJ career. Mm hmm be mono it's in me has to come out don't know why okay i don't know why ask yourself the question why please it's very important there is going to be a why because otherwise you you wouldn't do it that, you know, just because you don't know what it is yet doesn't mean there isn't an answer to it yeah it's not magic there is there is an answer so ask that question the big why very important Sid just expression. Safe nafe. 
helps me get through my daily life. <laughs> Mona, uh, fame, drugs, sex. <laughs> You're in the wrong game. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are easier ways. I think there are easier ways to, to, to those things. <laughs> <laughs> so. True, true. Mirror fly. Uh, to feel like I'm flying. Claire, it's an important part in understanding and solidifying my identity. Okay, can I just stop, stop there? So I, 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 it, it might be, um, it might not be possible to actually, um, I don't know what exactly what Claire means by, by this, but just be careful, just be careful that in saying, in using that word uh, identity, you're not making the mistake of thinking that your music is you, is an extension of you. Your, your music is not an extension of you. It's simply what happens when you make music. Right? It's, it's what happens when you express yourself. That doesn't mean it is yourself. Why is that important, Luke? Um, because you'll get real... Uh you'll not be able to look at it objectively. And there's almost like this, if your music is you, then if it's bad, then you're bad. You're terrible. Yeah. Um, and, and then you can't, you can't experiment. You can't try anything that could fail. And if you can't try anything that could fail, then you can't innovate. Um, yeah. and you can't. Yeah. That's exactly it. It's like it's, it's a, um, it's one of the things I've noticed about a lot of perfectionists is that they believe that their music is them. It's a, it's a part of them as, as people, as identity. It, and I get it. It's very, very important. But if you can just shift your understanding that your music is simply what happens when you express yourself, then it becomes much easier to not attach yourself to every single result. Yeah, thinking that your music is you is a straight like straight line to perfectionism which is what we're trying to avoid yeah keep using a few more of these because i'd just like to get a sense yaniv to get away from the wife (laughs) 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 oh Uh, dear no yes uh no i not 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 yes no i that's (laughs) right no uh so uh (laughs) sally if you're watching that's not why i why i make music so uh, so uh (laughs) That any that, it, that mention anything to do with wives, let's just ignore those. Okay. Um, okay. I'm getting myself in serious trouble. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Matt, the need to be creative. Okay. Uh, yes. Billy, the emotions I get from hearing some music is something I want to recreate. Right. Okay. Spence- cool. Okay. So, uh, let's move on. Because I'm afraid it's time for a dose of cold hard reality. Because like, if making music in any way for you is about what other people think of it or that you want other people to hear it, then it's, it's really, really important that you understand uh, what I'm about to say. Uh, and this is the bit where it gets a little bit de- depressing. Okay? Um, so... There are legions of new music producers coming online every single day. Right? That's, that's a fact. And it's continuing. It's only going to get more and more and more. So in that situation where more and more people are able to make music, I mean, I don't think it's an overstatement to uh, say that as automation, sort of the, the you know, technology and automation brings people more time in their lives, Um, And as the music making tools get easier and uh, cheaper to use, which is continuing all the time, there's just going to be more and more people making music, right? So into the future. So if you want your music to be heard, not only do you have to be better than the people who are coming online, you know, now, you have to make the kind of music that someone, you know, any, any given person will choose to listen to over the world's best. You have to make the kind of music that someone will choose over insert your favorite artist. Just think about that. 
Oh no! Remind me why we do this again, <laughs> right? Because nearly every single piece of great music that has been made or recorded is now available at the click of a button to anyone with an internet connection. As I said, remind me why we do this again. Now, obviously we do it because we love it. We do it because we can't not. Yeah, we do it. It's almost like it's um, in for me now because I, you know, I stopped for eight years and that in a sense didn't feel like a choice. I just kind of had to stop. But now it's like, I can't not make music. It's something I kind of have to do for various different uh, uh, reasons. But in terms of, you know, if, if you make music in any way for other people to uh, uh, listen to, then you've got to bear that in mind. That you've got to be thinking about how am I actually going to, not really persuade, but how am I going to make the kind of music that people choose over Prince? <laughs> Like, because you know, one of my uh, favorite artists of all time is Prince. How am I going to make? How am I going to make that kind of music? Okay. Now let's think about the common sense way to make the kind of music that people will choose to listen to. Make the music great, and make it sound great, right? So you make the notes great, and you make the production great. I mean, obviously, kind of more to it than that, but but just broadly speaking. That is the common sense way, right, to make the kind of music that people want to listen to, isn't it? So, who wants to make great music which sounds great? <laughs> yes, me as well. I want to make great music that sounds great. But, in a world where your music is shoulder to shoulder with the world's greatest, you're literally on the, you're in the same place as the world's greatest. What's the problem with great music that sounds great alone. It's incomplete. Great, just great, brilliant, the best sounding music, yeah, isn't enough. I mean, let's get real. How can your music ever compete with an artist who works with the best people and who's invested their life mastering their art. I mean, maybe you could become one of those people, but how likely is that? Well, after that dose of reality and all the depression, here's the great news. You can. It can sound, it can compete with these people. It is possible because there's a simpler method, which will make your music more valuable and more authentic. Not more valuable and more authentic than the world's best, but more valuable and more authentic than yours, if you're not thinking about what I'm about to talk about. Develop your unique music. Music that only you can make. Now, I'm not talking about a slight variation within a genre. If I just uh, slightly EQ the hi-hat uh, in this piece, it's a totally different genre, and it's like it's just nobody, nobody else could have done that. I mean, actually, I was joking with the guy I was talking about, the techno guy, where he said that, actually, if I was to use a different hi-hat, it probably would be a completely different subgenre of techno. <laughs> but but, but uh, because it's so, it's so simple. But, 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 but yeah, so, so, but I'm not really talking about that. I'm, I'm not talking about slight variation. Um, within a genre and and I don't mean well I made it therefore it's unique that's not I mean that is a, a theoretical definition of unique you know obviously no one's made the exact piece of music that you have made you know in any given moment but that's not what that's not what I'm referring to I mean finding ways to express your already existing uniqueness in your music Because simple market forces mean that if something is rarer, it's more valuable. Yeah? If there's less of something, then then it's more va the, 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 the value increases. I mean, think about it. If you are the only place somebody can get a particular thing, are you going to be more? I mean, and they want that thing, of course. Are, are you going to be more or less valuable to them? You're going to be hugely valuable to them. If they love the thing that you do and you're the only person in the world to do it, you're going to be, you know, you're going to be in a genre of one for them. Yeah. Plus, 
when you're unique, you don't have to wait to be as great to be as valuable or even more valuable. Yeah, you don't have, just, just think about that. You don't have to wait to be as great to be as valuable. So if I try and I don't know, play a certain type of jazz, yeah, then I have to go to like I have to go through this particular training. And, and I might want to do that. I'm not saying this is a bad thing to do, but I'm just giving you a, a you know another perspective on your uh, music, right? I'm not saying it's a bad thing to want to be the world's best in a certain genre. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just trying to give you a different perspective, okay? So if I want to be, you know, the world's greatest, I don't know, bebop jazz pianist, then I have to go through a certain amount of training in order to be able to do that, to get, like, even in, within shooting distance of the world's greatest yeah now i don't happen to want to do that right but if i did want to do that it, it involves a certain kind of you know length <laughs> time invested certain amount of practice however if i take some of the ideas from bebop combine it with something else and then create something new which de-emphasizes the fact that i'm not the world's greatest in a particular way well then I'm actually competing with that bebop artist for people's attention because I'm the only person doing it. Yeah. Now, I really want to be very clear here. I am not saying we don't want to be the best that we can be. Yeah. We do want to be the best that we can be, and I want to help you be the very best that you can be. I want you to be the very, very, very best. Yeah. So this isn't about avoiding... This isn't about like kind of hacking our way into <laughs> sort of uh, something. You know, this isn't about avoiding hard work. This isn't, this isn't, this isn't that. Just that in the modern music industry, the very best can't just mean great music, which sounds great too. Because there's too many people doing it and there's going to be more and more. In order to find the people who want your music above anyone else's, it has to be unique. Yeah, I, I just don't think there's any option. If you really want other people to listen to your uh, music. Okay, so to give you um, an idea of the kind of artists that I'm talking about who I value, not because they're the best compared to X, Y, Z, but because they're unique. Floating points is... Um, I always uh, mention him. Um, Little Dragon, a band who uh, I absolutely love. It's my uh, wife's uh, favourite band. Fortet, John Hopkins, and uh, Burial. Now, none of these, none of these artists are like making music from Mars. This is the other thing. By unique, I don't mean like weird. I mean weird's cool too. I'm, I'm, I don't mean against weird. But you can make commercial commercial music, which is unique. This isn't about underground versus commercial. That's not, that's not this. Oh, Kanye, he's unique. Yeah? Um, Definitely. Yeah, yeah. so, so it, this isn't yeah. about the difference between commercial and underground. This is something else. This is about being like, you, it's like you instantly, when you hear that one, maybe not instantly, maybe not within a note, going back to, I think it was Silverbeat's uh, comment, but you hear a piece of music and, and the listener knows it's that person, you know, that artist. Um, and and obviously, if you're a singer, you've got a, you've got a kind of a leg up on instrumental artists because you've got your voice, yeah, which is kind of by definition uh, unique. Although one of the things that really surprises me in uh, pop music is that everyone, so many singers sound the same. I'm like, I, I don't know who's who. I'm like, they, they've all got the same stylings. They, they, they're like copying each other. There's this like big echo chamber of of the same way of singing. And I'm like, I was listening over Christmas to some, you know, Christmas playlist with the kids. And I kept on checking who it was. And Sally was like, why, why are you checking? Why are you checking the playlist for who's, do, do you really like this? And I was like, no, no, it's not that I like it. It's just that I don't know who it is. It, like, it sounds the same as the, and it was some person I'd never heard of. And it sounded like, I don't know, Christina Aguilera. It sounded like, so they all sounded the same, right? Um, so, but anyway, coming back to it, yeah. If you're an instrumental artist, then it's kind of more difficult to do in many ways because you don't have your actual voice. 
but you need to do it in your voice. Yeah, and if you are a singer, then I would suggest respectfully not to get, try and sound like Christina Aguilera or, or, or whoever you know the, the hottest latest person is, Dua Lipa or, or whatever. I would suggest that you actually want to find how you can sound like you, not someone else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And unique is simpler to achieve, right? It might not be easier exactly. In some ways, it's easier. In some ways, it's simpler, right? But it's simpler than a narrow definition of great that other training focus on. I mean, think about all other music production training or music making training that you can think of. It's all focused on making you the best. Where is, where is the training? Tell me. Where's the training that focuses on you being unique? Tell me that. There may well be some I've not seen, but I, <laughs> but, but I but I I I've, I've uh, uh, yet to find it. Yeah. But it's a simpler it's a simpler way of of attracting people's attention and actually get in of becoming more valuable than uh, than than great because you are actually already unique. Yeah. But simple doesn't necessarily mean it's easy, exactly, because you have to understand unique music, like where it comes from, what, what it actually is. Because as I said, it's not underground, or it's not weird, or it's not, it, it, like, unique is kind of different to that. It's, it, it's putting things together which haven't been put together before in that way. Yeah. The other thing that makes it difficult is that you really have to ignore the crowd. And what most of the internet is telling you and most of your friends and everyone else will tell you. Yeah, I, like, I've worked with some uh, pop artists um, who work for major labels and, and they do work for major labels, to be honest. Um, and the music, like it's really difficult to coach those people because their music is written by committee. I mean, they do obviously have a big say, a say in it. But it's like nothing can get past the committee of like five to ten people. You know, the, you know there's the manager, the A and R guy. You know, there's there's Janet who works, you know, in 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 the canteen. You know, <laughs> it's like all of these people have a say in what <clears throat> in what you know this piece of music uh, needs to be, because. They're all scared of it not being a hit, right? Because they're trying to reach the most people. But actually, success in music is much more, well, not much more about, but it's as much about who doesn't like you as who does. I think I've said this on a previous stream, but even, you know, uh, the number one artist in the entire world, most people in the world don't like their music. think about that most people in the world don't like the music of the number one artist in the world so we kind of think that we need you know i just want everyone to like it well no what we actually want to do is we want to make the kind of music that certain people are going to like yeah and not you know it's like we want to double down on it yeah in other words what you have to do is you have to use your courage you have to have you have to have the courage of your convictions and use that to go in your direction you have to be happy to try many things which don't work. Because if you're going to make something, you're going to put something, two things together or three things together or ten things together which haven't been put together before, a lot of them just aren't going to work. So what does this remind you of? You have to splurge. Yeah, there's another reason that splurging is so utterly important. You have to have a part of your creative process where you are trying things which are likely not to work. The, the majority of things, if you're trying to do something unique, the majority of things that you try aren't going to work. Or, alternatively, you're not going to know whether they work or not because you've not heard them before. You know, um, there's this... Uh, one of the ways that we start to, I mean, I don't know, who liked 
wine the first time they tasted it? No. How about oysters? I still don't like oysters, actually. But if anyone likes oysters, who liked oysters the first time they tried? You like, you, you grow to like those things because you do them over and over again. Right? So often, what I find when I'm doing these musical experiments is that I don't know whether I like it or not because it's so unfamiliar. I mean, do you, you remember that splurge that I played you, which was the techno thing with that kind of piano solo over the top? Uh, I'm saying to, to, to Luke and Arash, I, I, sent, I sent them a splurge and I said, what, what do you think of this? Yeah, and it was a bit, I mean, it was all over the place. It was a splurge and I was just, you know, playing stuff over, over the top. But it was, it was funny because both Luke and Arash and me had this kind of experience where it was like, oh, no, 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 this doesn't work. And then by the end of it, because it was kind of a slightly extended one, they were like, actually, <laughs> it's like it's starting to make it's starting to make a bit of sense now. Because actually familiarity is one of the ways that we actually get to like things. Yeah. So your initial reaction is often more about what already exists, what you are familiar with, than it is anything else. I mean, I you know, I was talking last time about going into that room where Carl Cox was playing in that dodgy shopping centre club um, in Wandsworth in, in London and hearing that kick drum for God knows how long, right? And just having my mind blown. I didn't know whether I liked it or I hated it. It was just, you know, in incredible. And now I love kick drums. Can't get enough of them. Uh, right? So, so you gotta, you got to realise that so many of the things that you like are simply, you only like them because they're familiar to you. So that's what we're going to be doing in the uh, style splurge, or starting to do. Remember, this is just starting. You only have two days of splurging in, uh, you know, on, in terms of your style. Uh, and that is, I mean, I've been doing it for 200 days, I mean, 400 days, probably 600 days by now. Yeah, And I'm still kind of coming to terms with it. I mean, Arash, like, what, you've been doing a lot of this uh, recently. We've been talking about it in, a, in our coaching. What's been your experience with trying things which you've not tried before or doing these uh, experiments? So it's always a little weird at first. Not weird like, but like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what I'm looking for because like you said, it hasn't been done. So at least with these new splurges. So it's, it's total experimentation and seeing like, what sounds good to me right now? Or what is this? So it becomes more of a sense of exploration with these new ideas than anything else because it's, oh, there's no precedent for it, right? Exactly, exactly. And it's not, it's not that there's no precedent, uh, precedent for it because, um, it, <laughs> I said precedent, uh, it's probably something to do with what's going on in the news. But anyway, there's, there's not that there's no, <laughs> there's no, there's no uh, precedent uh, for it, uh, that doesn't mean it's it's like completely weird. It's just you don't know whether it works or not. Right. It even gets you to question what does a piece of music working mean? Maybe, maybe I, mean, I think I've even asked this question of, of uh, both uh, Luke and Arash in, in a session that we've had. It's like what does it actually mean to say that some a piece of music works? I mean, what do you what do you think about that question, Luke? I mean, this is kind of an unanswered question. For it, for music to work, yeah, I think it's, it's like it, it, it like it, what does it actually mean? It, how much of it is simply about what we're used to? I think most of it, because I mean, even yeah, I I think back to uh, definitely like uh, the Rite of Spring. Oh yeah, um, I mean the first, yeah, the first time I heard that, I think it was because you were talking about it, and I was like, nope. Um, then listen to it again, I was like, nah, and then. Um, then listened to it again a few months ago and was like, oh, oh, I see why people like this. I like this. This is great. Um, that track, that track. Because <laughs> of Riot. That, 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 that ballet, uh, <laughs> that track, uh, that, that, that ballet actually caused a riot. In, it, it was like people were so like, what that? Because up until that point, I actually did my, um, one of my finals papers. I did a dissertation on uh, Stravinsky. Um, um, 
so up until i mean this was at the start of the uh, 20th century and uh, up until that point music had been a very particular way and there were very specific rules and this piece of music just totally and utterly threw it out of the uh, of the window and um they were like it was a, I don't know where it was the first time, but it was one of the first time two different keys were put together. There's one particular one, which is the one that goes like that, and uh, it's got two keys at the same time, which are completely clashing, doing these chords. Um, and people just went absolutely ballistic. Yeah, it just it, it was just chaos. Um, I want to make that kind of. I want to make music that causes a riot. <laughs> uh, I think I'm fairly far far away from that at the moment um <laughs> but anyway so um okay so are there any questions coming through about this okay here we go heto aren't dj producers more scared to go out of a genre than the social solo artist now i see heto's got some headphones on there and holding them in his uh, photo as if He's a DJ, maybe. So I'm guessing that he, that Heto is a DJ. I was thinking about this just yesterday. I, I think I read, where was it? What was it? Oh, that was right. I'm going to update the th firmware on my Mother 32. So I watched a video from Mother, from Mother, from uh, Moog saying, here's what the new firmware delivered, you know, the, the new features. It was really funny because underneath there was a comment saying, what everybody wants, what everybody wants to know is this, right? And I was like, I didn't want to know that. This was just some random person. What everybody wants to know is this. I like, and I was like, I didn't want to know that. I, I, I already know that or like, I'm not interested in that. And this is like a real problem that people have on uh, the internet in general, is that they assume that what they, their experience is the experience of everybody else's, right? Often... People will say, you know, I'm sure that every, you know, like they'll, they'll send me an email. Go, I'm sure that every, you know, everybody else thinks this. And they don't know that I've had, I don't know, an avalanche of emails saying exactly the opposite. <laughs> so I, I'm not, you know, Heto, I, I, I know this is only sort of slightly the same thing. But I think that's probably another example of, of you thinking that the, DJ producers are, I call it almost like uh, special flower syndrome, where it's like the pr DJ producers have it much harder or much more scared than the solo uh, artist. I don't think, no, I, I think that's false. I don't think that DJ producers are more scared to go out of a genre than social solo artists. What it probably is, is that you're a DJ producer and that you're scared to go out. So you're probably thinking, well, it's harder for me than it is for, for anyone else, which is understandable. That's totally a human reaction. I have it too. But all I'm asking you to do is look at those kinds of reactions, you know, because, I, you know, uh, and, and just question it. Yeah. Similar to the everybody. Everybody thinks this. <laughs> no, they don't. Um, so, yeah, go on. Frankie, Frankie has a good question. Because uh, uh, how how would you know or how do you make a mistake? So who so how do you make a mistake? Who's that yes. from? Frankie. How do you make a mistake? I guess in in as you're and I'm assuming because this is a little slightly further back. So this is when we're talking about like trying new things, experimenting, seeing, finding out what works. Mm. So. Um, that's a great question, Frankie. Um, I'm not sure. I don't know what a mistake is exactly. Uh, the reason being, some of my best ideas haven't been my ideas. They've simply been my best mistakes. Mm. Um, it, like, like I, I've actually uh, come to the point of when taking splurges through, in fact, when splurging, and also when taking splurges through the machine, I will actually intentionally leave in things which I am processing as being mistakes for longer than you would think would be sane. So literally like wrong notes in the wrong place, you know, out of key and out of rhythm. I will leave them there for a while because I know I can fix them. 
and they're not bother. I mean, they are bothering me, but but they're not. There are other things that I can do first. I will just leave them in there. And what has happened time and again is that they have become my favourite thing about the piece of music. Um, I wish I could. I like uh, maybe I could. Oh, I won't. I won't. It'll take too long. There's there, there's this piece of music that I've got, and it ends on totally the wrong note, which was a mistake. I just played the wrong note, and it. It became the thing that, that it became the whole purpose of the track was leading to that wrong note. So I don't know <laughs> how you make mistakes. Um, having said that, there is of course an objective. That, that there is of course uh, better and worse music. But I guess that it was Miles Davis who said, "What was it?" He said, "There are no mistakes." Be something about it because it depends. It's what like you if play you play next. the wrong note. If, if you play the wrong note once, just play it twice. Yeah, that's exactly. If you play the wrong note once, just play it twice. Uh, also, Herbie, great book, another great book. Herbie Hancock, the Herbie Hancock um, biography, not uh, autobiography, written by him. Actually, it's read by him as well. Uh, you can get it on Audible. So Herbie Han Hancock, if you don't know, one of the greatest uh, jazz uh, pianists, uh, or maybe even the great, one of the greatest jazz pianists alive or even ever, I think, uh, keyboard players. Um, and he gives the very start, the very start of this autobiography. He talks about playing this absolutely amazing uh, gig with the with the Miles Davis quintet, um, and he basically made, messed up. Like it just really, it was just absolutely on fire. It was magical, and then he just messed up. And Miles Davis just looked at him and played this thing that made it right, and just turned it into an even more amazing. Uh, kind of uh, situation and he said that was one of the, the, the best or biggest lessons he ever got from uh, uh, Mars Davis so yeah I don't know what mistakes are maybe maybe to uh, use a coachy woo phrase maybe there are biggest opportunities um I don't know <laughs> it's like that uh that Alice in Wonderland you know the the one where she asked for directions do you know that little parable story she's like would you please tell me which way to go and the, there's like a cat and he's like well, it depends on where you want to get to. And she's like, well, I don't really much care where I go. And he's like, well, then it doesn't really matter which way you go. So if you don't have a purpose or direction you're going, you know, can't really make a mistake. Yeah. I mean, what you can do, because like the direction in which you're, the direction in which you're going, you can choose in any given moment, I'm going to go in this direction. And then I suppose you could process certain things as being mistakes. But, you know, certain direction, you know, certain things that pop out as being mistakes according to that direction. But this is why it's so important to detach from the result because often one of those mistakes will suggest a better direction. Can this is discovery uh, in in action or just you know a direction you hadn't thought thought of? We talked about this a lot in the in the I was about to call it the discovery splurge, the, the, the preset splurge, where often the ideas that you didn't think of are better than the ideas that you could. So you saw me um, demoing the splurge and there was that sound, that, that it was splurging, and there was that sound which I didn't like. I was like, oh God, that's a terrible, <laughs> terrible sound. I'd never choose that, that <laughs> sound, the, the, the one. And then I played this, this uh, solo on it and it was like, oh man, that's the best thing about this <laughs> now. That sound that I never would have chosen. It was such a great example of what, what, what we're talking about. So it's not that you don't have a direction of travel. It's just that you have a very kind of relaxed relationship to that direction. You, you are able to bring in the mistakes. Again, detach from what you supposedly like and don't like. Because yeah, that's where the magic is. Um, okay. So I'm going to now... To find the right thing.
sorry about that folks again it was the thing that i didn't get right okay so so i'm back so first choose mu two musical elements from the music that you love music from your past yeah not from the genre of music you are making now okay so examples of some musical elements aren't it's not just it's not just bass it's something like Alberti bass. So what Alberti bass is, is a particular movement from classical uh, music. Like that. Down, up, middle, up. So this is a triad, major, major chord. And Alberti bass is it goes on the root, fifth, third, the fifth. Okay? So that's an example of a musical element. It's a particular thing with a particular thing, like a particular part that is played in a particular way. So another example of uh, a, a type of bass might be, I mean, this is a really, 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 really basic one, might be, you know, like in a lot of trance, it just goes. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's another musical element. Yeah. Um, other example. Prince-like program beats, like like in um, Housequake, one of my favourite Prince tracks. <clears throat> I'm not going to try and sing like Prince. Don't worry. Uh, yeah, different kinds of uh, melodies. So it's not just melody; it's a, it's a, a type of melody. Yeah. Um, particular uh, harmony. Instrumentation. So. Another an example that I uh, use is Vangelis-like sounds, like this. Yeah. So there's another example of a. I mean, you know, as soon as as uh, as soon as I play that if you're aware of like Blade Runner and stuff, you sort of instantly think of it. Yeah. Um, you know, and different kind of ways of using uh, sound design uh, as well. Yeah. What you want to do is you want to create a new five players template, which includes the two musical elements. OK, so you can use any of your previous templates as a starting point. But essentially, you're creating a new template for this called the style splurge or style uh, template. Yeah, but this time, you're taking music from your past, elements of that music, and just putting two of them into uh, the template. OK, so let's just talk about what I'm using. So. I've got the piano here. Yeah, and I'm I think for this one I'm just going to do the Alberti bass thing. Yeah. Okay. And my second element, I'm just ignore these. I'm just gonna hide these. Just so that we can see what we're doing more clearly. Alright. And I'm going to use a Vangelis. Yeah. And then I've got my other three parts here. So harmonica on D fam and mother to the stoop. And by the way, the 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 um particularly the sub harmonicon and the D fam um are well actually more the sub harmonicon. The reason that that works for me so well is that it actually fits in with another of my musical history things, which is this kind of Steve Reich um, minimalist style of uh, uh, music. It's like kind of the repetitive uh, motifs over and over, uh, over and over again. One of the reasons I love it so much is because it's really relevant to me. I was kind of obsessed with it at university um, uh, as well. So, but anyway, so you've got two musical elements that you have uh, uh, chosen. So let's go back to the mind map. 
when you're splurging, use two extra style splurge rules. So I must start with one of my chosen musical elements is an example. I must use the other musical element I didn't start with in every splurge is another example. Yeah. And you don't need to keep up the preset rule from the preset splurge. Yeah. But please do bear it in mind. I actually use the preset splurge rule very often when I'm getting all stuck up on trying to find the right sound. I'm like, rah, 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 rah. give yourself a slap mic and just get on with it and just choose a sound, you know, not choose a sound, fight, just go with the first sound that you find. Yeah, so that, that preset splurge rule is like a get out of jail free card. You, see, you can use it time and again, but you don't have to use it in this uh, situation. Okay, so what I'm going to do, because of these very, the, the specific way that this works, um, that this setup works, where these things are actually kind of just playing on their own. People asked last time is what, where are the, you know, what's sequencing the, these machines. They're sequencing themselves. There are, there's two sequences in the subharmonicon and there is a sequencer in the DFAM. And the only thing that's coming out of the door is a clock signal. So, so it's telling it how fast to go. So at the moment I've got this going at 120 BPMs, but there's no notes coming out of the door. Because of that, I'm not going to start with one of my style splurge rules. I'm going to start with the, these uh, machines. Now, I've set something up beforehand, so you don't have to watch me uh, do any of that. OK? Um, but I'll just show me using the style splurge uh, rules. Um, let me just check. I've not missed anything. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to this time also visually arrange the parts just as we did in the uh, preset splurge. Okay. So let me just check. There we go. And reset that. Okay, I think it's good to go. No, you are, you are going to have to watch me um, do something. I'm just going to do this. start by recording a bit of just these three things playing okay and then I'm going to do this star splurge rules over the top
Okay. Just for demonstration purposes, that will do. There is a there is a uh, problem with the uh, tuning on the, the defam there, but it doesn't matter because it's a splurge, remember? So, uh, but essentially, I've just got a little uh, backing track uh, Ooh. going on there, and I'm not worried too much about the uh, the mistakes and the fact that things aren't uh, working and you know uh, all of that kind of thing, because this is a splurge. So now I've got this. I need to turn off the in there so that it doesn't play that. Now let's start with the. So this is the Vangelis type um, string thing. Um, and I'm not quite sure how I'm going to change the camera. Yeah, you're not going to see me for a bit. I'm sure, well, I'm sure you'll manage. <laughs> so let's, let's, I'm just going to, I'm just going to hit record without worrying too much about it. stuff now so at this point the vangelis strings aren't that different from the genre that you would expect the other parts to be in right there's not that much that's not not it's like it's kind of in the same bracket if you like there's not that much uh, difference at all it's one of the reasons i actually chose this particular combination of things to demonstrate it because you're like well you know, that's not really your own style, is it, Mike? It's just, you know, it just sounds like, just sounds like th this kind of music might under normal circumstances. So let's just add in the Alberti bass kind of thing um, and see what that does. Yeah? See how that kind of changes the perspective about how different or not, not different it might be. Because the Alberti bass uh, figure really comes from my love of Mozart. Because um, I learned Mozart sonatas from a very uh, pretty young uh, age. I remember, I, I won a local piano competition for this particular sonata. The one I was talking about, which Glenn Gould plays really, really fast. Uh, that, that, that one. And it's got, you know, Mozart, the, the, the music of that time all had a lot of... Yeah. Um, so it, it literally comes from my musical... Uh, history. So let's give it a go. And this is quite fast. <laughs> so um, I've set myself up for, for some mistakes here. So let's give it a go. I can't remember the notes, so I'm just going to have to do a bit of fiddling around to uh, remember what the notes are.
what? There in the end <laughs> so uh, what i'm actually going to do is i'm going to um actually leave in me fiddling around with all of this stuff here yeah and i'm going to leave it basically uh, like that for now what i might do i'm not i'm not going to show you me visually arranging it because i did it uh, last time but basically what you would do is at this point visually arrange the, the parts if you're using a door or record yourself playing the parts if you're not using a door in the order that you put them in, which is kind of already there for me, with a couple of other combinations, and there's no need to listen and there's no need to get good tape. Okay, so I'm actually going to leave in all of these, me fiddling around and trying to find the notes and mistakes. Yeah, I'm even going to leave in the mistakes there. I'm not even going to edit it. I'm not going to do anything like that. I'm literally just going to export that as is. Why? Because some of those mistakes might actually serve to be a good idea in the future yeah some of me working that stuff out i may well have hit a note just at a point where it makes me i mean even if that note isn't the right note it may well give me an idea remember i'm making something for me to have an opinion about later or even i'm making something to give me an idea later that's another thing that you're doing when uh, you're uh, uh, splurging right so, so, and you can hear that when I brought in the Alberti bass thing, figure, in the piano, it made it sound, I mean, if I put in that kind of Alberti bass finger in a lot of my music, that is something that will make people go, oh, that's probably on a piano. Oh, that's probably Zentor, my, my new uh, uh, artist name, because I'm launching a new uh, artist name to show the building of a uh, music business this year with one track a week. So if I chose to do that Alberti based in a lot of my music, which I probably will, people will, when they hear that, go, oh, that's probably Zentor, right? So even though it doesn't come from me, it comes from Mozart or whoever Mozart got it from, I'm applying it to a context which then causes people to think, oh, hang on a minute, that's, that, that sounds like Zentor. Yeah. So can you hear how that, and, and also the, the important thing is that it sounds like me because it's relevant to me. That element is relevant to me. It makes sense for me to use that element given my musical history. I'm not, I'm not choosing it randomly because I just heard it on the radio and someone told me that this is really hot right now. Don't think I don't know. Oh, Rash, you're much more down with the kids uh, uh, than I than I am. Um, <laughs> so, is, is the uh, Alberti bass uh, left hand figure on a piano uh, like really hot right now? Yeah. No, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I'm not sure it ever will be, but who knows? Maybe we can make it that right. The point that the point is is that I am choosing my elements based upon my musical history rather than what the flock of sheep are saying is big right now i mean maybe you can speak to this a bit more arash i think we already mentioned it but with the whole kanye like insight mm -hmm. that, that that we had you spoke about it last time but i'm going to presume that some people didn't hear that so so where we were talking about the choir sample 
Yes, that it's it's people. It's like the auto tune example that that you're saying when you were listening to the playlist. That it's every we tend to create the thing that we hear. That I like this and I want to make something in this world. So when I'm finding my sound, the way I was doing it was not contributing to a unique sound because I was making the things that I liked based on what I've heard. That's my precedent, if you will. Um, but what you just demonstrated uh, with the Alberti bass is like, that's something from your history uh, and hot to you. Based, exactly. right? and, and, and now you're bringing that in. And so f how it turns to me is I'm reaching back to my history and uh, sampling from my, my heritage and bringing that to the forefront and melding that into something that's unique for me. Exactly. Instead of sampling like 70s records or uh, 60s records. Mm. Of course. If at some point in your life you had got really, really into 70s records, then that would become relevant to you. So it's not that it has to be something that, it, it's not that this isn't changing, but it's like there needs to be, I, I feel like if you want, really do want to express yourself, then you want to bring things in from your entire past, which do express that past. Yeah. Um, and not just be thinking about what's hot right now, because really what's hot right now wasn't hot in the past. <laughs> right. Right. Um, and, and there is a, a sort of authenticity to it that it kind of gives you a reason. So uh, another really good example is the, when I improvise the piano over the top and I get really super kind of, you know, kind of saccharine and, and cheesy, you know, uh, 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 that kind of thing. It, it, it bothered me at first because I couldn't remember why I was doing it. I just started improvising the piano over the top because I knew I wanted to improvise. I just started improvising the, the, the piano over the top of uh, things. And I kept on doing this certain type of thing, which, and it, it, it kind of like, it didn't make sense because I'd forgotten about this particular album, which I think I may well have spoken about last time, which is uh, the Keith Jarrett um, Cologne concert. Uh, where he improvised a, a um, you know, a whole concert, and it's got this particular vibe to it, which is very like ooh, and I was totally obsessed <laughs> with it. <laughs> ooh, uh, like that, and uh, it's got this particular vibe to it, which is, uh, I don't know, it's just very kind of. I mean, you could say it's kind of cheesish, but it's just I don't know. I just love it. Absolutely love it. And as soon as I remembered about that album i was obsessed with it for a, I don't know, a couple of years i just didn't listen to anything else but it was on a cd and then i moved from university obviously i went to uh, live in london and got into like electronic music and it moved from cds to vinyl i then started uh, vinyl. I kind of my cds were away from me. i totally forgot about this album for years and only remembered it a, like a couple of months ago and, and all of a sudden the stuff that i was doing on the piano made sense and it was almost like I now had given myself permission to do that because I know why I was doing it. It was almost like up until that point, I was questioning that element. So I, that's how important it being relevant to me, I think, is because it gives you, it's almost like it gives you a certainty about using it. Here's why I'm using this part, which is to do with me, not to do with what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. There's a, there's a couple questions yes. that came up. I, I, I'll, where is it? Sid just had asked, and I'd given an answer, but it'd be great to hear from you, yeah. is basically, I, now I can't find it, but he, the question essentially was, if, if we have to start from the past, should we start from that place, right? So you started with the, uh, with the sequencers, and then brought in the Vangelis bass. Okay, so 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 I think I it, it doesn't have to be. Um, so the reason I started with the sequences is because of the way that it works. It's actually easy. It's it's a much quicker for me to start with the uh, sequences. And by the way, I did actually see another question, which is 
did I already set up this chord progression? And in this case, yes, I did. Just because I didn't want you like to, it was it would have been boring for you just to see me twi uh, twiddle dials. You did actually see me do it because the the, the bass was really, really, really out of tune. MF, don't worry about that. But like usually, I I, I would the, the, the splurge would start with me just setting up some kind of very simple sequence, and I try and take as little time as possible to do that. I try and splurge it. That one took me, I don't know, about five minutes to uh, set up. The other thing that you kind of need to set up when you're doing this, sorry, you probably can't see, uh, move you over to this side, is, is plug these things in and create a kind of patch, which means that, because essentially what's going on with this is that the subharmonicon is driving the DFAM, which is, and also partly driving the mother, but also the, the DFAM is also driving the mother. So they're kind of speaking to each other, and you, and you do that with this. So... And, and often what I will do is I'll just plug these things in and then I'll use that patching system for a, a, a number of splurges because you can, you can do you know, unlimited combinations with the things plugged in like this, okay? Um, but I started with the sequences because it just so happens to be that, that with the way that I'm doing things, it's quicker, so far anyway, to start with the machines doing something and then me improvising over the top because if i try and get the uh for instance the sub harmonicon to play with something that i've improvised it just it's a lot harder it's a lot harder and i'm always going for the simpler quickest most effective route i may well i mean that's one of the things i wrote down on my list of things to do which is try doing it the other way around okay <laughs> so but for you if you're not using sequences or anything, then I would I would recommend I, I I don't know try it both ways maybe try starting with the musical history element try starting with the non-musical history uh, element it, it, it's kind of up to you that's that's something I'm going to leave open to you um, I think I think I'm not I can't exactly remember but I think in the demonstration that's on the coaching uh, site um, I think I started with the Alberti bass. I think because I did, I did the Alberti bass there as well. I think um, so. That that's not a rule. It's for you to decide, I guess. Try it both ways. See which one is quicker and and which is more fun. Like use that as the use that as the way of deciding what order to do things in. Yeah. Did I say it wrong? Did I say Vangelis bass? It's Alberti bass. Uh, no, no. So so uh, the, the the Vangelis is is it Vangelis or Vangelis? I don't know. Yeah. But I'm, I'm going to say Van Gallis because that's what I've always said. So Van Gallis is the <laughs> uh, uh, synth pads and Alberti bass is the thing. So. Got it, got it. Um, Blade Runner. Mm. Uh, for fans of what Circles asks, so we can tweak this template like we could the others, right? I mean, do we have to utilize the same two elements in each splurge? I would, uh, if I was, um, so... Who, who, sorry, who was that? For fans of wet circles. For fans of wet circles, yeah. So in general, it's a great question. In general, what I would strongly recommend that you do is start with like design a template and the rules, and then use that for a specific amount of time without fiddling with it. Right? Because you don't have because it like just imagine. You, oh, in fact, Luke, why don't you kind of talk about what could happen if you don't do that, if, if you just constantly tweak the, um, the template? Um, well, you could spend all your time tweaking a template. Um, <laughs> and you can get, like, very perfectionist with your template. Um, you can, like, you know, you can make things and be like, well, it doesn't sound great at the end, so I need to tweak my template. Um, and like it can just kind of uh, the splurge is not just a, a a a a the purpose of it is not just to come up with ideas. It's also to be like exercise for your creative mind. Um, and I know like you've talked about this a lot. Like when you if you ever stop splurging, it becomes harder to work on stuff you've already started. Um, and so you don't. So tweaking the template can too much yeah it can it can almost become like a form of distraction um so it's fine to you know like try to improve it but don't let it be like the reason 
yeah i mean that. yeah exactly like 100 percent. and the other the other thing is that there's a mistake that people make where they go all right i'm going to try these things okay and they, and they try it once or twice or even five times and I, oh, that didn't work so i need to change the template but that's the kind of opposite of discovery right because you're not you're not actually seeing what you can do with what you've got you're you're assuming that the template isn't right because the results aren't right which is exactly the opposite way around often what isn't right is that you've just not practiced using it enough like how could you actually use this and what are the things that you could do with what you have so and, and don't try and get the template right there isn't such a thing as a right template yeah so yeah i would thoroughly thoroughly recommend going with it and just doing and as as many splurges as you can with that template and then what for a specific amount of time obviously in this case you've got two days so just choose something go with it see what happens it doesn't matter it doesn't matter if it doesn't work you'll get more information from using it the same template multiple times than you will from constantly changing the, you know moving the goalposts all the time um instant person just asked what about different templates for the same splurge type i think it just falls under this answer yes yeah i mean i do change my templates but i don't change them until i have given each kind of little tweak that i've introduced a good go that's that's the bot that's the bottom line um and i mean i don't think i really go back to old templates so much either I, 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 it's like always kind of moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do occasionally, but but very very rarely. It's not like I've got a uh, a library of templates that maybe I, maybe I do. Maybe. No, I don't think I do. Uh, you can do that if you want, um, but but I tend not to because I am really on this finding my unique style thing. Um, so it is a constantly moving forward. Um, uh, Thing, and the templates really reflect that each experiment you know think of each template as an experiment you run this experiment multiple times in order to get the data back so that you know what to change yeah obviously in the idea explosion challenge uh, program i'm giving you different types of splurges which have different templates because they're they're different rules but when you actually come to uh, make your own music outside of the sort of boundaries of a training um program um you know, you, you want to be kind of moving forward according to the results of each experiment and what you could, you know, do next. I mean, that list I was telling you about where I was writing down all of the things I could do to make it harder, yeah, that was me kind of figuring out how I want to tweak my template next or, or my splurge next, you know, the, the rules of the splurge next. Son of a Preacher says, if I want to use the style of John Barry, would I pick a specific orchestral element as opposed to a whole orchestra, or could I use multiple? What do you think uh, about that one, Luke? Um, I think you could pick a specific orchestral element, or you could use multiple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I think, um, I think it, it, would be better, it would be better just for, the, for your mind to keep it simple but but yeah anyway go, go on what were you gonna say yeah i mean i've i've done i've done things like that where i do both like but i would say starting yeah probably try using just one and then um you know after that you can always try doing multiple um but yeah like you were saying like for the mind it's definitely a lot simpler if you just pick one yeah and the other thing is that you're not trying to be John Barry because you can't. John Barry's John Barry. Yeah? You're son of a preacher. Um, and I mean, I'm not trying to be Mozart when I use the Alberti bass figure. I mean, I never could be, obviously. Um, but, but if you just take one element and put it into the context, an unfamiliar context, it's immediately going to sound more unique. And if you use multiple elements from John Barry, you're going to start aping John Barry rather than stealing from John Barry. And when I say stealing from John Barry, what that means is that you are taking the element and making it your own. That's the de definition of stealing. Yeah. And in the context of the of music and the creative process, that definition of stealing, taking an element and making it your own, yeah, 
in other words, putting it in a context which, where John Barry hasn't put it before, in other words, not using it in the way that John Barry would use it, that is making unique music. That's why when people say, if you've ever scratched your head, why, why do people say stealing is better than imitating in terms of art? That's why. Because you're taking the thing and making it your own. You're reinterpreting it. In other words, you're adding value to that idea by creating something new out of it. It's yours now. You've moved the culture forward. You've moved music forward. You've contributed something. You're not just copying, aping what the hard work that someone else has done. Uh, um, you know what? I'm answering a question for the glass cat right now that I think would be easier just to say out loud. Um, the glass cat asks, can we clarify the difference between templates, band members, and presets? And templates are essentially like the default session that opens up for you when you open your DAW. I, and this is what can get modified at every time. So at this point, my session in live has like three drum racks, three synths, and four audio tracks, one of which is dedicated to vocals. I, the band members is what is specific to this splurging. So it's part of the five players template that Mike was talking about earlier on. And it covers the uh, certain frequency ranges. So you have your drums, your low, uh, low mid, uh, uh, mid high. No, I'm missing the. I'm missing up the middle too. Yeah, uh, uh, but high mid, high mid, low mid, bass high. That's it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then the preset presets are when you open up a synth. There are all these sounds that are already in there, so you can just select a sound at random, and it, I want a bass sound, so you click on that, and the the knobs and all the the knobs will be set in such a way that a bass sound will come out of the synth, or a pad, and then you can press your keyboard, and a pad sound will come out. So hope that clarifies yeah. for you. Um, one thing that that um, makes me wonder is, have you watched the the videos where? this is all uh, explained. So if you haven't, go to that uh, website where there is the Idea Explosion Challenge program. Um, I mean, this is a public um, uh, session, so maybe it's somebody coming in who doesn't know what, what, what we're actually doing here, which is totally fine. So if, if you don't know what we're doing here, then go to make music your, your, your dot, uh, make music your dot life, um, and you'll see the Idea Explosion uh, Challenge uh, competition program. And uh, that's where the, the stuff will be. But essentially, the template is the, is the thing that you create made up of the frequency ranges parts and the presets are the thing that are within those parts, I guess. So for instance, a piano, I guess, is a preset of a kind, if you like. Piano sound is a preset of a kind. So. Um, Rob just asks, same speed rolls as before, go as fast as you can. Oh. Good, good, good point, Rob. Thank you for that. Um, let's just let's just re review the uh, splurge rules. Same as usual, right? Zero focus on quality. You are being the creator in your creative process. You are not being the editor. Yeah, you're doing that. We're going to do that afterwards. Don't worry about that. So you can't move forward by pushing the brake and the accelerator accelerator at the same time you'll go around in circles you'll start looping yeah 100 fo uh, percent focus on quantity speed 20 minutes max this time depending obviously on what tools you're using what genre of music you're making and your practice level but you know let's just say as a guideline 20 minutes max only exception is if you're in the flow and there's no resistance please record the audio a stereo file of the splurge that's really important and and also, of course, save the project files and then do not listen until day 11 of your challenge. So those rules still remain. These are the core rules. These four are the core rules of pretty much every splurge. Um, th that is splurging. Everything else that we're adding to it isn't splurging. It's just extra stuff to learn stuff. Yeah, this is splurging. OK. Any other questions? I oh, actually I saw a good comment from someone. Here we go. Um, so uh, 
Can someone get rid of the uh, one of the guys in there? Um, we have a troll. Um, I got him. Yeah. Cheers. So, um, will you want to hear the elements, and will we get a chance to explain it? No. We like so, okay. So that's a, that's a good question. So this is about the competition, um, I guess. So you, you don't you don't need to. Yeah, like we're we're not going to be that kind of granular with the with with the judging. I mean, there's just going to be three um, questions at the end. I'm not going to tell you what they are yet, I, uh, but there's going to be three questions at the end, which are really about what you got out of the program, not what you got out of each individual splurge. You're not going to have to like, you know, spend an hour filling out a you know kind of doc document in triplicate. Telling you, you know, with a blow-by-blow blow account of how this went for you. Really, we want to we, we, look. We want to know from that, and this is what we will be judging it on. On that, not from the the actual uh, results. All you need to have done is eleven uh, splurges. But what kind of progress you made, and what kind of things you learned in general from the Idea Explosion Challenge program. So we don't need to know all. You know, it's not. We're not like teachers marking it. it it's more of a. We want to get a sense of how much you've uh, progressed and what what you got out of it so yeah don't don't stress it uh, too much about that you can't get this wrong uh be mono i there were two questions about samples yes and they're basically just asking if samples can be acceptable and yes. i said yes yep absolutely um, uh, Bug Tank asks the question: Is this different from the Splurge ten day course that Mike sells? No, this isn't different from that. I mean, it is in that there's a competition element, and we've never done these live streams um, where there is additional uh, stuff uh, ha happening. Um, this is, you know, the, the reason that I decided to do this competition, uh, which you know, and. I mean, it was. I mean, it's fifty dollars usually the the uh, idea explosion challenge program, and but the reason I I did this was because of well, it was partly because of everything that's going on in the world, um, and you know the pandemic and all of the kind of uh, uncertainty, uh, you know, around the, the 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 presidency and all all that kind of stuff. I mean, when I actually thought of doing, oh, and actually I did know that because the, it was when the election was uh, was was about to happen. Uh, and I just thought, well, you know, what would be a great way of doing something, A, to take people's minds off it and get them focused on making as much music as possible. And I thought there's nothing better than a, uh, a competition, yeah, to sort of to, to, to get people uh, sort of G'd up and really kind of focused on uh, something which is, you know, creating value and sort of taking your, you know, an escape, if you like. And there is no better. I mean, I, I've never found a better way of escaping than splurging because you're literally removing the need to focus on quality. So you just, it's like a way of getting into flow, right? And so I thought, well, it would be great to do this program as a competition so that like anyone who wanted to uh, could do it, um, get as many people involved in it as possible, us have a community around it. The other thing that there's never been before is the Discord uh, community, community around it so people can hang out, you know, all of whom are kind of shooting for uh, uh, the same goal. So, so yeah, so this, this uh, idea explosion challenge, the, the, the program is the same, but do it a second time, a third time, a fourth time, and you will, it will be different every single time, right? It's like there's this, this, this kind of, I need new information thing that's, that's out there. Um, actually, where, where mastery lies is, is in doing the same thing over and over again. <laughs> that, that's how you get really, really good at things. Hang on, I've lost my correct screen. There we go. Yeah, that's how you get really, really good at things is by doing the same thing over and over again. I mean, in the leap, I think it's son of a preacher actually. Uh, son of a preacher, how many times have you done the leap, Tom? It's like ten times or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and that's why with all of my uh, programs, you, you can get, you can do them like as many times as you want. I don't um, because really that's where mastery is. Um, So David is asking, any plans to do another challenge stroke stream? I'll spread the world word in my circles, if so. Yeah, I, I'm going to see how this goes. It's been going great so far. 
Um, and certainly the idea is to do this again. Uh, if I mean, I don't know what, you know, I'm not sure I'll, about the competition part. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure about any of it. But certainly if it goes well, which it has been so far, definitely the idea is to do uh, this uh, again. I mean, certainly the idea of Explosion Challenge is always there. Um, anyway, uh, so the yes, basically. There was a question about, oh man, hold on. Uh, I forgot who asked. Oh, wait, here we go. Later in the process of editing, arranging, and mixing, do you ever use the splurging process slash approach for other stages of the track if you are not making progress? Yeah. Uh, Luke, why don't you um, speak to this one? Wait, can you, I was responding to someone, can you read it again? Uh, later, yeah, later in the process of editing, arrangement, and mixing, etc., do you ever use the splurging process slash approach for other stages of the track if you are not making progress? I pretty much only use the splurging process for everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it just, and then, yeah, you'll, uh, and then just, you know, listen back and, and, and then splurge again. Um, yeah, and uh, the, the, like there the, you go. the 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 idea is, and uh, as I said, the the um, the reason that we teach splurging at the start of the process, you know, the kind of mindset, if you like, or the approach at the start of the process, because it's so much easier to do it at the start of the process, because there's no downside, even though you would have thought there was, given uh, how <laughs> much of a struggle some people seem to put themselves through, but really, there's no downside because there's no judgment. Yeah, because you don't need to release it. You don't need to finish it. You don't need to. This is just an idea. Yeah, so there's a lot less kind of uh, emotion and weight attached to it. Whereas at the end of the process, when you're mixing or mastering, you've got this like uh, uh, judgment thing going on. So it's much harder to um, do it in a splurgy way. But it is 100% possible. And it's exactly what I do as, uh, as well, is I splurge mix. I mean, every single time I go into any creative process, whether it be at the very end or at the beginning, my, uh, you know, sort of my mantra is don't sort of don't judge what you're doing. Just do the thing that you've decided to do. And then when it's when you've done that thing, move on to the next thing and judge it later. And that, that might sound kind of somewhat counterintuitive when you're trying to make things better, but it, it just works so much better because then you judge it when you're outside of the process, when you're actually listening to it. I think, I think that's about it. Fantastic. All right, folks. Well, don't forget that where are we? This. the next session, same time, 12th of January, where we'll be giving you the last splurge and we'll be uh, turning the heat up with the final countdown splurge and uh, showing the so secret the world tells you it's wrong method, which Hilariously, literally every successful artist I know of uses. <laughs> right. So you've got this situation where the whole world, except for the successful people, are telling you it's wrong, right? To discover where the biggest breakthroughs are in your music making and how ignoring most people and offering your own thoughts to double down on your splurge practice will deliver results. Your friends and even you will shake their heads uh, in wonder at. So that's what we'll be covering. Uh, uh, next time, I apologize for the big mistake I made with sending the stream to the, a new event rather than the actual event, which was very, very foolish of me. Um, I will, can, guys, can you make sure that I do that in future? <laughs> it's like actually send it to the right place. It's an ecam thing. I just, yeah, I just didn't think about it. I just missed it. So um, I hope this has been valuable. It's been great to hang out. Make sure you go onto Discord. I'm going live on my other channel in about an hour and a half um, with. Uh, a new splurge performance. So if you're into uh, watching that, there's, there's just, I think Luke has put the link in the description now. Um, did you copy it and paste the stuff? Yeah, you might have to refresh, but it's yeah. it's there. Okay, cool. Um, so until yeah. until wait, they're they're not the guys aren't letting me off the hook. You awesome. got to hear my splurges. Oh yeah, God, I always forget that. I <laughs> like, oh man. All right, then let's go. <laughs> So, so let's 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 find these splurges. You're absolutely right, folks. Thank you for reminding. Me. I'm not um, 
I'm honestly not trying to do it on purpose. I just quick just forget. Um, I thought I was skating away free, but you know. <laughs> All right. This one's called Trappy Splurge. <laughs> <laughs> good that was too good <laughs> sorry all right next one we've got four here so we'll try and find a bad one this one's cool <laughs> you got a bit I, I tell you what could be uh, do with some improvement uh, oh, all right <laughs> is your naming okay so that last one was called trappy splurge this one's called trap splurge <laughs> <laughs> Listening to that now, uh, oh, so w listening to it with the frame of we're trying to find the worst splurge that you've done. Like, what, what are you noticing? Uh, it, it's okay. Yeah, it's not. Uh, for me, I think it's bad because it doesn't. Actually, I can't even give a reason. It's the it's it's okay. It's not no, as bad may, as I like. May, it maybe bad means it's not what I want to do. I, like, but it's not bad. I mean, that's no. one of the, that's one of the reasons that I say there's no such thing as a bad idea. Because it depends on the context. So that's why, like, when you use the automatic music machine, um, you don't delete anything. I mean, so why I say don't delete anything. You just, just you just don't do that because you don't know what is going to happen in the future which may well make an idea relevant yes yeah it's like a bad idea suddenly makes sense because you're, you're now in a different context yeah it's like another way of putting this is a bad idea is a potential a potentially good idea you don't know what to do with yet right exactly that yeah and that That's might be the vibe. problem that we're encountering in trying to find these supposedly worst splurges right like that's not a vibe that I want to necessarily move on. So it's bad for me right now. Bad. Right. 
Oh, here's one that doesn't use the word trap in, in it. So this one's called Cheshman. So, so, so this, these, these next two are from what I'm working on now. Oh, great. So okay. I wanted to show, like, B. Mono had asked how long ago this was. For, that was, like, early last year, um, uh, like January of 19 or 19 or 20. I don't remember. But the, these ones are the current iteration of sampling from my heritage. Ah, oh, great. trying to tell me that was one of your worst ones out of like all the ones that <laughs> seriously yeah it's really really no i'm serious now all right oh that's that's, that's great love it you know uh, maybe maybe i'm confirmation biasing myself here but it it, it, it just sounds it, if i because i've heard like listened to a lot of your music uh, you know, over yes, the years, yeah. obviously, we've, we've, been, we've been coaching for, for, for a long, you know, a long time. And it just, I don't know, I'm probably confirmation biasing myself. So I don't want to, I don't want to, um, I don't want to overstate it, but it just sounds like you. That one was sick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. That one was like, oh, that, if I heard that, I'd be like, oh, yeah. Yeah, what is yeah. this? Yeah. 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 No. Really? Um uh, Yeah, okay. So let's try this one. You're onto something for sure. Yeah, I've got. Oh, you got to play us the good one like, like after this. But I've like, got to play some of the good ones, man. Whoa, like definitely. Uh, yeah, because I mean, how how do you feel feel about them? Because this came about as a result of the, us doing the paths uh, workshop that we've been uh, working on. And I mean, how are you feeling about this compared to before we kind of got to the point where you were were sampling this stuff? You can be honest. Yeah, if it's uh, not working for you, and just be, be completely honest. It is. It is. I. I. When I started, it actually got me like super excited again to make yeah. music. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, it was just me. I yeah. Pressed the wrong. Uh, yeah. It. It got me um, super excited to to make music and like dig into this. It's it's challenging in its own way because it's it's I'm thinking about how do I flip these samples. It, it opened my eyes to like, oh my gosh, there's a lot of funk influences and psychedelic influences in Iranian music. I never thought that I would, I never thought that that was a, a thing, but, but it is. And um, it just gets me excited for like, what else is possible? Uh, so I'm excited to dig into the Ethiopian side as well, but I'm, I'm still moving forward on Wonderful. the Iranian music right now. Oh, I mean, you know, I could just hear your voice over the top of this. You know, really kind of taking it to another level. So, like, yeah. Well, I mean, if that's the worst stuff, then wow, great. Can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so we're still struggling to find the supposedly worst uh, ideas, but I do think it's a function of, as I said, when you are when you tell yourself, right, I need to find something bad, it actually becomes hard. That's, that's one thing. But then the other thing is what is actually a bad idea is just dependent on the context and what, what you're looking for. Um, a lot of the time what you're comparing it to what you're expecting again which isn't a function of how good or bad the actual music is it's a function of you music remains the same you change 
which is why your opinion in any given moment, another reason why your opinion in any given moment is unreliable, because you're in a particular context that makes it more unreliable, where you're focused on specific things which make it more uh, unreliable, which is yet another reason to develop the splurge practice. So, don't, so uh, thank you for all that, Arash. Uh, it's a little bit scary when you do this in, in, in public, uh, live on YouTube, isn't it? So, so, uh, is. so that's really fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so uh, yeah, we'll, we will leave it there. Um, and don't forget the next session in two, da in, uh, two days. Next time, I guarantee, hand on heart, that I will actually start the stream in the right place. Um, so um, don't worry about that. Go to the, go to the link, uh, as I said it, and it will be there. So until a couple of days' time, we'll see you on Discord. Until then, onwards and upwards.